This is roughly what it looks like. I like to start with a 30,000 foot view. Where are we going? The v VSL sales process is, is simply this. We have our video sales letter, which in this case is mostly short form video. Then it's leading people into DMs. They see you, they hear you. Hey, you know, they, they like what they're seeing and hearing. I want a little bit more. We direct them to DMs. We nurture there. And then that grows into a call or a workshop or a training or, you know, lead magnet, more information specifically around the pain that they have. And then that grows into, oh my gosh, that's me. You know, percentage of those people then are a new sale. Let's talk about VSL sales process. This is the 20, it's, it's honestly, this is like $20 million per year. Uh, it'll do closer to $40 million this year. This is this process. And uh, you'll see us roll this out more and more effectively uh, between now and the end of the year also. And, you know, when we find a good thing, we want to share it with you guys. So this is what we get to talk about. VSL, for anyone not familiar with sales marketing nerd jargon, is video sales letter. Once upon a time when, you know, we wrote letters, you know, uh, copy is words that sell. You'd write a sales letter, advertisement, whatever, that sells this stuff. Uh, video is the same thing, but it's video. And particularly in this process, what uh, works and converts really well is short form video, aka shorts. And uh, I we got to go to the best on this. So that's that's Ryan Pineda. This is here in Vegas at his office, and and he has his different studio suites uh, around that main area in his lo the lower floor of the office. Uh, so there's a wealthy creator workshop. That's where, this is where a lot of this is coming from. They're doing tens of millions of dollars per year uh, through DMs. They're really good at it. They're really good at content. So we're like, hey, we're going to you know, pick up a couple things from you. In fact, if you want the notes, uh, I did a different training on this, I don't know, months ago, but there's the URL. Here's the first one. We're starting off fast. I forgot it came up already. Here, I'll drop this in the chat for you so it's a little bit more convenient. Uh, that'll bring you to 15 pages of notes that I took while I attended that two-day workshop. There's some really great stuff in there. I highly recommend checking it out, but um, we won't get distracted with that too much today. I just want to let you know that this was the process that we were specifically studying further. It went down the path where uh, they're, they're also using Flowchat. And so we were like really connected to uh, their sales process um, and there's some things in here that I know you guys are going to really like. This is roughly what it looks like. I like to start with a 30,000 foot view. Where are we going? The v VSL sales process is, is simply this. We have our video sales letter, which in this case is mostly short form video. Then it's leading people into DMs. They see you, they hear you. Um, hey, you know, they, they like what they're seeing and hearing. I want a little bit more. We direct them to DMs. We nurture there. And then that grows into a call or a workshop or a training or, you know, lead magnet, more information specifically around the pain that they have. And then that grows into, oh my gosh, that's me. You know, percentage of those people then are a new sale. That's the sales process. We're going to dive into each of these sections together today. And again, there's more resource that goes with all of it. So if we're going to start with VSLs, the first thing that we need to do is write them. We need to write these shorts, but there's a specific way of doing this. And there's a lot of ways how not to do this. <laughs> Has anyone already done short form video? Uh, okay, a couple. All right, cool. Some haven't. Well, good. This will make either way. This will make it easy uh, or a lot easier. And if you th think about video, <clears throat> um, this is honestly one of one of the best ways you can spend your time. Here's why. There's two two you know buckets of thought here. One is like ah it's video and I don't like this or my voice. Or um, most people are while they say they're insecure about video or don't want to do video or hesitant. It's not that they're actually scared of of speaking. It's not that they're actually scared of video. The real reason is they just haven't done it. It's more new than it is they're not good or they're scared. And I don't know if that's you here today or if you're watching the replay, but um, have you guys ever heard the phrase? Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard this um, and have done this already multiple times in your life, but you can outwork doubt. You can outwork doubt. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know. You can just rep that out. 
like go do a hundred of them and then tell me how scared you are a video, go write a hundred, you know, newsletter emails and then tell me how hard they are. It's how our brains are wired. You ask a brain the question, it'll answer it. But if you ask it a hundred times, it'll get more and more efficient at answering that. It's neuroplasticity, like physiologically, like our bodies actually adjust to what when and adapt to what, what we need to get better and better at. It's really cool. And so just knowing that sometimes mentally, emotionally, that because we stop before we even start just because of that, but we can outwork that. And so you can privately do reps on your own 20, 30 minutes or less and start watching that go get less and less and less to where it's as natural as just talking or breathing. Um, all right. So let's let the, when you go do that, this is how you want to do it. First, you want to start with topics. Um, your topics, man, a great place, write this down, a great place to get pain topics and not have to think about it at all is all those sales calls, Harley, that you're now taking <laughs> or about to take, <laughs> right? When you're on, when you're having conversation with people, that's market research. These are ideal people that are considering your, your, your service. And so what pain are they actually dealing with? Is it actual business related? Is it self-doubt? Is it money? Is it time? What's taking up their time, right? Maybe you have a lead magnet or a short that helps them free up time to actually do more of the thing that they, they need, which is your service. So you get, there's, I, I promise, like if you give me a product or service and give me just, and not, not a lot, like just one, like the main one, the big one, you can generate thousands of pieces of content about just one thing if you follow these formats and you, and you know how to do it. Um, and it's interesting, creative, entertaining, et cetera. Okay. So we start with good topics, but we want them to be strategic around pain points. Okay. Um, next, uh, there's three steps. Yeah. You know, so writing the body, you know, when you're getting into, that's like the main content. So when you have your, your, your topics, you're like, okay, this is roughly what we talk through and here's some quotes here are some interesting, you know, the three steps to getting, you know, qualified leads is, um, or you can do authority stories, you know, I don't know who's the big name, you know, Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Gary V. Uh, I was just talking with them in their office and here's what I learned. I did it a little bit earlier, right? Oh, Ryan Pineda, here's who does tens of millions of dollars and like, want to see how they do it. That's an authority story. Immediately. It's interesting. Um, okay, so new head turning facts, facts you've never heard of before. In fact, in the document that I gave, and a lot of this was inspired uh, by uh, yours truly, Sean, after he came back from Africa, talking about how elephants like sift through water and da, da, da. I was like, wow, that's like a crazy weird story I would never expect uh, to hear and that I didn't know elephants did that. And as elephants are filtering water, I use that same analogy and framework for how we filter leads. So when you combine an interesting thing that no one knows, it's totally random. And then you're just like, oh, this is exactly how we do business. What? Like, it's just, it's, it's just entertaining. It's cool. So, um, and then you end with a CTA. Elephants are amazing. Yes, they are, Natasha. <laughs> really cool creatures. Um, and so, okay. And, uh, CTA is call to action, okay? Which is going to be primarily... Uh, you know, click the button to learn more or DM me keyword, DM me scripts. If you want the scripts that closed, you know, $2 million in 21 months or whatever the hook is, right? All right, cool. Now this might be the most important part and it's the hooks. We have topics that are strategically built around pain and we get the pain through ideally sales calls and conversation with our ideal prospects, right? They come from their brains, not ours unless we are also our own, pro you know, the prospect or uh, customer of the service. Um, and then the, um, the, the body is something interesting and there's different frameworks. You can use the authority framework. You can use three keys or three secrets too, or with the how-to stuff or the one that we are covering. The hook is what grabs the attention. If we don't nail this, then ain't nobody watching anything, okay? Now, here's something that I picked up that um, I, I haven't always done prior to, to the, you know, thing months ago, but normally we think about in creating a good hook, we do just that. We create a good hook, but some of the best videos actually go hook, hook, and then into the body. There's actually two hooks. I didn't know you could double hook, <laughs> you know? So 
what is what does this look like? How do we do it? Let's talk about it. All right. So the most important part, you know, you can name drop. Sometimes I did a little bit earlier, like, hey, want to hear Ryan Pineda's like, you know, eight eight figure sales process, right? It's name dropping, plus it's putting in like a, a dollar amount, right? That's a big result. Share big results. Two and one, right? Emotional words, confronting. Have you guys seen these headlines? I confronted Tony Robbins about his sales process. Whoa, what? Like, it's just a little polarizing. It's interesting. Um, if something's, I'll never be, I did this and I'll never be the same. Oh my gosh. Like, what did he, what changed you? What was so dramatic? You know, it's very dramatic, emotional language. Disruptive. I think this might be Sean's favorite. It's a good one to use. Uh, it's like the most disruptive software, that, you know, or system or tool or being disruptive is like, you know, you're, blowing everything up and and everyone's talking about it kind of stuff anything that's shocking um is good and so if you have thumbnails that are consistent with like if you're talking about you know, you know if you're doing like a name drop or an authority drop having the person's face next to your face is consistent and congruent with the thumbnail i don't want to hang here too long i know you guys are with me on some of this stuff but these are best practices uh, to to really like not skip over and and give yourself permission to spend more time on it. Oh, I spent five minutes. I spent an hour going back and forth. Drop it. Come back to it. Spend another hour. Spend three more hours, because you know, like there, I forget. Uh, there's a really cool story. It's some some book or interview I was listening to over the weekend, and the guy flew Larry King out, uh, to his office, and he replicated like the whole carry uh Larry King live thing. And had him do his like intro, you know, like I'm, you know, Larry King and whatever his intro is. And all this was, was promo for his book that was coming out. But here's what's crazy. Now it's already crazy that he did that. What's even crazier is that they launch it. It doesn't go that great. And he's like, I screwed up the hook and flies Larry King back out, resets up everything only to refilm the first 35 seconds. And after they fix the hook, they over 100x their sales. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? <laughs> That's crazy to me. So it's okay to be like committed, a little obsessive about this. In fact, you'll see earlier how you're going to get a lot of different reps for only one lead magnet and only one keyword to really make this process simple. Okay, so that's that's kind of like going through the script and some best practices. Here's a pro tip, though. Uh, take a screenshot, write this down. This might be Apple only, I'm not sure. Um, but if it's not on Android, there's a, there's a ton of like teleprompter, you know, mobile apps. You can find, you know, a good one. When you're writing these scripts and you're recording the short, I, you know, some people like to just record line by line and then they have to chop it up and it, it's a little bit more editing. Some people like to just, you know, read. And I would recommend reading through it three or four or five times to where you can say it and present it. You're not reading this, you're presenting it, right? Imagine if I just, you know, we did these trainings and I was reading from, from a script. It'd be like, ah, you can tell, right? But if you kind of like look to the side from time to time and you're really comfortable with what you're reading and you're looking right into the camera, then uh, these can be a great way to save a ton of time editing and you kind of iron out what you want to say. Because the trouble, the, the trap door here is if you go to record and you're actually writing an editing copy while you're presenting it, you're doing two to four things at one time. And it makes for a very uncomfortable, very frustrating creation process with shorts. You guys with me on that? Do not do that. <laughs> Thank me later. So one way you can do it is write, be creative edit, say what you want to say on paper, no pressure, camera lights, whatever. Then you can pop it into teleprompter, read through it, practice presenting it. Those are completely separate steps in the process. If you want to do it on oops, desktop, uh, write this one down, easyprompter.com. Easyprompter.com. It's free. And you just paste your script in there and then just put it towards the, you know, as close to the camera as you can. If it's on your you know, laptop or by your camera, wherever it is, just put it as close there. So it looks like you're looking into the lens. All right, let's keep flowing. <clears throat> Got to spend a good amount of time there. Now that it's written, you have, you know, where to go with your VSL and it's completed. Okay. Oh, and let, let me drop uh, this on you. Here are the scripts, you know, so I went through topic, body and hooks. 
you can see what I put together. Uh, yeah, thanks, John, for uh, Sean for dropping those links. Uh, you can see on that Google Doc, there's two different shorts that were written following the exact format we just covered. So you can kind of see that and see examples, and that will help you know get some creative juices flowing. All right, AKA VSL, we have uh, paid versus organic. Here's what's really cool about the strategy. Nailing this skill, you can scale organically. You can also scale, uh, scale with paid. Uh, let's look at what uh, both of these paths look like. First, if you go paid, Here's roughly what a VSL looks like. Again, it's going to be a short video. It's the same thing. Um, the good ones are interesting, entertaining, grab your attention, retain your attention. They're not super salesy, to be honest, but the story or the authority hack is right in line with the main point, the main pain, and the main problems that they're facing, all followed up with the CTA at the end, which is send me a message. And when you do this on Instagram specifically, check out what it looks like. You have three options. Which one is you? You're filtering your leads. It's pretty cool. Okay. And then you hit send and then boom, it ends up in the in DMs. Okay. So now with this strategy, people are coming towards you. They saw your reel through organic distribution or paid. They, they said, that's me. They sent a message, they're in your DMs. Now you get to respond to them and continue the conversation with this process, right? Now here's what's cool, check this out. There's there's a couple of things we get to cover actually. With the different options, uh, you're, so in the middle picture here, I don't know if, you, can you guys see my arrow, my mouse? You can, okay, cool, in the middle one. Um, in this In this process, check out what the user experience is, the customer journey of this. Stopped the scroll. Saw saw the video, I'm like, cool, that's me. I do one click, one tap, one tap. Most people are going to be on mobile, right? One tap. And then I have options. Then I do second tap. I do two little taps with my finger. That's pretty easy, right? And And we've got information. We've got a way to follow up. We know things about the prospect. It's It's really clean to just get into DMs. And they're waiting for more. Okay. A little bit once this happens, we're going to pick up the process in a little bit. But let's first look at organic. Organic looks like same thing, it's a VSL. And in true, you know, Pineda fashion, he's like, he's got the text and the great editing and, you know, pro team and presentation stuff. DM the word on Instagram media. It's a key word that he's saying at the end DM me this word organically. Um, you link it, I would highly recommend not sending people to a link in your bio. I'm, I'm assuming everyone's kind of like past that at this point, but you know, definitely don't do that. Send them to DMs. Media. You can see here, uh, it's really small, but over here we typed in media and then boom, this response came right away. There's two ways to make that happen, which we'll get to in a second. But you can see that it responded with the lead magnet, with the thing that he was talking about, with the thing that I want that solves my problem. Okay, you guys good on this? We saw paid, we saw organic. This is exactly what it looks like. Um, yeah, so there's up in DMs there. Okay, so let's talk about process automation. There's a little hack. You guys want to see a hack on this? If you're going you know, with Flowchat here, you can import from DMs. So as people are replying to you, just use the import feature, import right from DMs, okay? Then then people are automatically being uh, added to your pipeline, right? You can select where in the pipeline, you can tag them, you can do all the stuff. You know, uh, I'd recommend having this tagging them with the same keyword. So I'd tag them, you know, like IG keyword media or just media, right? Something like that. Um, but if you want to take this uh, to the next level and then, you know, move them through the pipeline. But if you want to take this to the next level, um, and this is this is what, you know, Ryan's team is doing. Uh, we have a training video, which is in the chat, of course, if you want to check this out, um, of how to make this part of the process automated. Okay, there's the training. And uh, let's see, I'll say uh, auto res response training. When somebody sends you a keyword, and even again, like here, let's go back, check this out. Even if somebody is sending you in the paid stuff, right? These responses, it's not a keyword. So if you're doing paid, you can, I believe you can still put this whole phrase. Um, 
you know, in many chat. And then when they send, they click it and it sends to you, you can have many chat um, automatically reply with whatever message you want. And you can connect many chat and flow chat with Zapier. So when this, when many chat takes this action, it's also simultaneously creating a card uh, in flow chat in the pipeline. And why does that matter? Why is that important? You know, why, why doesn't Ryan and his team just say, you know what guys like flow chat, like many chat is really inexpensive and it does it automated, you know, an instant, like, why would we even consider a flow chat? And the one simple word is follow up, <laughs> right? So R Ryan, Ryan's got multiple companies and uh, Sean and I like equal ideal buyers for a, a few of his companies. We could, he, we we're worth 20 plus thousand dollars a year to him. Easy. And if we use it like media stuff, I mean, that's like $40,000 plus per year to him. Right. But you know what? I have no idea that he had that company. And I don't even know, like, not only don't know, like, that he even has it, I don't know how to learn more about it, if he's any good at it, all these different things. And so if anyone would have followed up with me, I would have been able to learn about these things and, and get the business. And it got me thinking, I was like, how many other people are, you know, like, like me, that there's so much money just sitting right in front of them that he can't grab? Well, follow up solves that problem. And by throwing it into flow chat, as you guys all know here, you can now have conversations with hundreds and thousands of other prospects on a daily basis that are now coming to you, by the way, at whatever scale you'd like. You want more organic, make more video. You want more paid, pay Zuckerberg more money <laughs> and he'll place more ads for you, right? So uh, that training is dropped in the chat so you guys, uh, you guys can see it. And uh, that go I won't get into the granular, how to set it up, click this, click that. Um, the end result is when somebody responds organically or paid, that you can have one message that's automatically replies and it auto it's also creating a card within Flowchat. So let's keep flowing together here with DMs. Now that we got them in DMs and we have some of those processes ironed out, what does it look like? Well, it DM is basically what pipeline do you use, right? And the answer, is the one that you want to hear. And it's the same one, use the same pipeline. Well, what do you mean, Chris? Well, let's look at it. Here's an example of a pipeline that might not be exactly like yours, but something really close, why? Because right here, you're gonna have prospects imported, you're gonna qualify them to some level and you're gonna have your initial outreach. Everyone's basically doing that to some level. And you'll wanna have some follow-up to get them to respond. And once they respond, um, you know, you'll, you'll move them into lead magnet sent or response received, you know, stage like stage six here in this picture. And, you know, that's how it goes. Okay. So what's happening with the VSL process? Why is it the same pipeline? Well, the VSL process basically cuts that part of the pipeline out. We don't need to import them and we don't need to qualify them because they've already qualified themselves. Right. And we don't need to send an initial message because they are coming to us and they already sent us a message. Most people look at Flowchat as outbound, which it totally is. And and that's still what, all of what we're doing <laughs> internally, right? Um, however, a lot of people are also using us for inbound and it cuts out the outbound initial part of the pipeline. And it's going here. It's starting with the response received. In fact, if you think about this a little bit more, it's really starting out in the lead magnet sent. Because once they drop the keyword, you're sending that message, you're replying to them with what they already asked you to deliver. So you're following through on that promise, which is lead magnet sent. And then from there, it's like, well, where do we go? So like, Everyone has some type of nurturing, like whether it's the Facebook group link or the, the video or the PDF or the training workshop thing or the webs, whatever, you know, we're all sending our, our prospects something. That's basically that lead magnet stage, insert your thing. And then after that, the relationship grows to what? The booking link is eventually sent. We're booking a call or they're jumping on the training and then they purchase, right? You guys following with me on the sales process? So today I wanted to focus more heavily on the VSL, how to write it, how to think about it, you know, why, why it works so well, 
um, those kind of things, you know, iron out more of that and then let you know where that fits within your current sales process and what it would look like to actually implement. And I don't want to get too lost in like exactly what to say, you know, uh, at this part of the pipeline, because we have 200 plus other trainings <laughs> of, of us going through that. So review the vault if you want more there. All right. So call slash workshop. Um, reference Sean's training from last week. <laughs> Did an awesome call review. If you want to see how we do calls, uh, you'll see a personality profile breakdown. You'll see the seven stages of of every call that we do. How to take notes. How to uh, on on each call and you know set up a clear future and all the uh, you know fundamentals and methods that we use uh, for all of our calls. Really great training. Check that out. Um, you know in in the previous week's training. Okay, for sales calls. But this is where it would be next in the sales process. And then you would have the sale. Definitely time for celebration dance. You have your new client, your new customer. <laughs> and one of my favorite gifts. Uh, okay, so what are the next steps for you? Now that we know this, we've gone through the process, you understand the what in your mind. Um, what are the next steps that uh, you can take in your business? All right, if we're gonna create this VSL and the sales process for implementation, uh, this is what it would look like. This is my recommendation anyway, to do this right, to keep it simple, do it in like a fraction of the amount of time and have it hit, have it actually convert, have it actually work, have the people that watch it say, that was cool. Can I have another? You know, how do you get that type of result? Well, the first thing you need to do is identify your ICP's problem, your ideal customer profile, their problem. Where do we start with this? It's in the topics. It's in the pain points. It's from, a, you know, your sales calls, your sales conversations are a great place to start with this. So a really, really easy hack. And the more focused you are on not only the problem, but how the prospect relates to that problem, the words, the emotions that the prospect uses to communicate and express the problem are probably more valuable than also the problem itself because the words they use are the best copy that you can reiterate. You guys with me on that? That's actually a really big point. I don't want to skip over. So man, yeah, those calls are huge. Okay. And then we'll create a solution around it to solve the problem, build up confidence. Hey, oh man, they seem to have it together. Let's give them money. You know, they, they can help me get out of this pain faster. And then we'll, a lead magnet is not a half solution. It's a full solution for a smaller part of the problem. It's a big difference. You guys hear me on that? Lead magnet isn't like half of the service. It's, it's like fully solving the problem, but just solving a, not the whole problem. It's a portion of the problem. Does that make sense? You don't want to give somebody like a half-assed thing. You want it to be excellent and they they should uh you know finish the appetizer being like wow that was amazing and i definitely want more if you guys are with me all right then we're going to build five different vsls that all have the same keyword here's what's really great about this you really only need to create one lead mate if you don't already have one most of you probably do and if you already do then that's already done now we're just going to create creative around it so let me give you um an example okay those are nice like bullet point that's the framework of how you i recommend thinking through this but here's an example of what it looks like vsl creation example identify ic problem for us it's getting leads right a big problem that of uh different agencies that we're talking with they want more leads chris i got a sales team they're hungry i got to keep feeding them leads how do I do it? Well, in a couple clicks with an extension, like, boom, it can happen. Another solution is, what if we talked about the VSL sales process that filters out the bad ones? <laughs> like we just did. Man, this is a great way to get leads. <laughs> um, and then we'll create a lead magnet around it. What if I created a whole training kind of like today <laughs> and I provided scripts, kind of like the links I keep dropping in the chat. <laughs> See where this is going. Um, and then you build five different VSLs that all have the same keyword. And you're talking about leads. I really recommend just doing one word if you can, right? Ryan was doing media. This one is leads. And you can talk about hot leads and cold leads and crappy leads and qualified leads. Those all can be different things you say, but it's like DMing the keyword leads if you finally want the right ones, right? And so, in fact, part of... Um, 
uh, you know, on the here, you know what, let's do this. Cause I think that was the last slide I had for you guys. Okay. Yeah. So check this out. Let's go to the scripts I was referring to. This is the, this is the uh, desert elephant situation that uh, Sean was sharing a story when he came back from Africa and I was inspired. I was like, well, it's just like, you know, a sales process. Cause I see everything <laughs> through the lens of business and sales and marketing these days. And um, okay. I'll just read it so we can go through it together. Uh, desert dwelling elephants may be smarter than you think, and here's what you can learn from them. Unfortunately, hundreds of elephants get sick and or die every year from contaminated water. Both of those are two hooks, by the way, right? It's like interesting thing, interesting thing. Ooh, I didn't know this. Oh, I'm learning. Okay, I haven't really got into it yet. But obviously, they still need to drink water to live, so what do they do? Asking questions is really good, too, to pull people in. First, they find a body of water. Then they dig a, a water hole close to the water. Elephants figured out that by the time the water fills their hole, the sand has filtered out the unwanted bacteria. So they don't have to watch their loved ones die, making it safe for them and their family to drink. For some of you, your lead source is contaminated. Your lead quality is horrible, and it's actually making you and your team sick. And even worse, you're starting to hate your own business. I've created a list of eight questions that can be your water hole. They help filter out the bad leads faster without wasting endless hours on sales calls with unqualified prospects. DM me water hole so I can send you these eight questions immediately. That's, that takes, it takes about 56 seconds uh, to record and like talk through, right? And so then after that's the body. And you guys will see this if you guys haven't already started looking at it. Here's some different topics I was playing with. I eventually landed on, you know, leads and lead quality, right? And then played with some different hooks. 3X your sales in less time or 3X your sales in less time by selling like an African elephant. What? Like, what are you talking about? So it's more of a curiosity hook, right? Um, water hole. There we go. Cody's in. <laughs> this, this is fun. So if sometimes you're, you're uh, you know, maybe feeling overwhelmed with your process or whatever, this can be a great creative outlet. By you committing brain space to this, even if you never sent it to anyone else and you never even published it, what this process will do will help you focus on your customer, your clients, what their problems are, how to solve them and be more succinct, uh, more succinct with that process. And, uh, and, and you'll, you'll consequently sell just better in general and any in the copy that you write and the calls that you take, even if you never end up publishing it, although as you build the skill, hopefully you do. And it also brings you more sales. So that is the eight figure BSL sales process for you guys today.